you've said that I think you have to have a reason to make a record. Yeah. You have to have something you need to get out there, something to say. Yeah. I mean, what do you feel like you have to say this time around? A reason. More, more than Kath wanting to get me out of the house. Kathy, your beautiful um, wife, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, I'm a great believer in providence and synchronicity, and um, it, it, there's always something that sort of um, kicks off a commitment to doing a record because it's changed. I mean, everything has changed in the music, and I hate the term business because to me it's a passion. And so writing's always a part of my life. And uh, But to make a record, I think you have, you know, there's a lot of good music and, and a lot of bad music out there, and I don't want to contribute to the, the latter category. So I wanted it to be the right record, and I'm pretty demanding that way. And, and But there's got to be connective tissue on the record. And um, I think that... Uh, I guess the one song that really kicked in a, a good batch of, of songs was one I wrote a couple of years ago when this started. Now, there's a, there are a couple of older songs on A Prayer for Hope, which I wrote after a trip to Africa and an HIV initiative over there. Uh, and the other one that I wrote for Bill Bell's wife for her to sing when they split up. And Billy brought oh. this song up when we were making the record. And he says, you, you got to do the song Diamonds. I go, Bill, I wrote that for your wife. And, I and he love said, Diamonds. Well, thank you. Oh. And he said, so do it. So I did the song and, and it, it, it sounded pretty good with me performing it. Tarjaya Green sung on that one, not Jessica. I'll probably have Jessica and just, sing on some yeah, further stuff but for people who haven't heard yeah. the album I mean Diamonds has one of the best lyrics this, for me yeah. he said I well, saw a you. man carrying a sack with all he'd ever owned in his eyes I saw everyone I'd ever known really yeah. beautiful and it's just it's phenomenal and when you when you put out well, an album you. like this it's so heartfelt and so much mm -hmm. work put into it do you feel pressure? No no I'm because it's something I wanted to do so I mean how the record performs uh, commercially is, is I mean, you want it to get out there. So I want as many people to hear the record yeah. as possible because I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can, it's, I can't anyways, I can't commit to a tour, the kind of tour we're doing without, mm -hmm. um, you know, something new, a, a new body of work. And, and getting back to your other question real quick, I mean, the one song that really kicked it off was the ones that I've known, which... Um, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a song about freedom and the struggle for freedom. And I connect the dots between somebody I'd seen because this record's a bit of a retrospective where I'm, I'm taking care of some unfinished business. And this is something that happened to me that I'd never written about. And I told people about it. But in 1980, hadn't slept for a couple of days. We're sleeping in the back of the station way and driving mm -hmm. back from Winnipeg to Toronto after doing a couple of gigs and trying to make ends meet. And I'm thinking about quitting the music uh, business, getting out of it. And um, we stopped just outside of Thunder Bay, and this kid, one-legged boy, runs by, and it was Terry Fox in the rain. And uh, just to see the courage and the pain in his face, you know, I thought, you know, man, I got my health, and, and I'm doing something I love, and I'm making people happy, and, and let's give it a goal, go for a while longer. And, yeah. and so it was one of those markers in your life that kind of changes the way you look at things. And that kind of – so I wrote about that, but in the song I kind of connect the dots between – the, his struggle for freedom against the disease mm -hmm. and for himself, but mainly for other people. And, and in the first verse, Rosa Parks struggle for, for uh, uh, you know, the civil rights movement. And, and they're both struggles for freedom. And that obviously I didn't, I didn't know they never had a chance to meet Terry Fox mm -hmm. or Rosa Parks, obviously. But it's something that I think when I say the ones that I've known, it's something we, we all should relate to. The better parts of our nature should be able to empathize with them and relate to them, and we're all should be touched by by their struggle. So, I mean, that kind of kicked off the record you know, in a lot it, of ways. It's funny when you talk about Terry Fox. I, I came to this country, you know, my family, immigrant family, and the first time to this day, probably the only time I've ever seen tears in my dad's eyes. Yeah. I was really young and I didn't understand because they were watching TV and I asked, what's wrong? My mom's crying too. And they said, a great man has died. Yeah. And so I think what you've tapped into is something so many Canadians can relate to. And not For just sure. Canadians. He obviously inspired people around the world. Yeah, I mean, he really started the whole... Uh, walkathon, runathon for for you know to yeah. raise funds for different yeah. charities, and and the thing about about him, you know, I talk about about him being a boy, but but in in his eyes, you know, he was a man, and and to to see him run by, and when I wrote that song, uh, synchronicity again a week later, I think Randy Lennox called me, my good buddy at Universal, mm -hmm. and he said, Tom, you gotta, you know, I want you to to present 
uh, posthumously the Walk of Fame award to his brother and his dad. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, you know, uh, you know, I'd be so honored to do that, which I was. It was a powerful honor. But I said, I just wrote this song. And I, <laughs> I, I sent it to Randy. He said, well, you got to play that song as yeah. well. And so I did it with the tenors. So it was a powerful moment. Yeah. I mean, it, we hardly could get through it. It was, sure. it was a powerful moment. You yeah. know, Tom, there's so many songs. that They are powerful. And the stories behind them are so powerful. But somehow, you've got to figure out a way to do it. In three minutes, roughly, give or take, <laughs> and that is crazy to me. You know, are you setting me up for the next song? Uh, yeah, right. It's play? no, it's just, it's just such a task yeah. because these are multi-layered yeah. stories. There's so much going on here. So, how do you do that? I mean, how do you distill it? I th it's a craft that you develop. It's like Raymond Carver writing short stories. You know, he was brilliant at writing those short stories. I'm inspired by some of his work. You know, and uh, John Cheevers. There's a whole, there's a whole kind of approach to it. Um, and, and I kind of, the boundaries are, are, are comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's because you, ha you do have to leave a certain amount to imagination. And I think that's one of the things that, um, we as Canadians, as writers, you know, whether it's songwriters or, or, or writers of prose and, and, and novels and so on, I think we, we are kind of masters of nuances. Yeah. Uh, in, in a lot of our work as yeah. Canadians and Canadians kind of understand that side of, of art and music. Um, it might be part so, of the self-effacing yeah. nature, right? You don't want to yeah. necessarily put the spotlight on you. So maybe you don't make it so obvious. Well, yeah. Can, yeah. It, and when you tell a story, I mean, I, I love to be able, you want to lead people somewhere, but you, you want them to, to fill in the colors yeah. and, 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 and make their own uh, minds up about, yeah. about how they're going to feel about the song, but you lead, you lead them there. And, and, uh, I guess that's where the expression <laughs> couched in metaphors comes some yeah. sometimes, but I mean, it's, um, you know, you it's, talk about it's a craft. You talk about colors it. and it's pink time for me. This is, wow, what a song. This is this is a song that you actually premiered on Q back at our Juno show. This was in did, Regina yeah. back in 2013. By the way, we'll put a link of that performance yeah. uh, on our website. Got a lot of response on that. Too, yeah, it, phenomenal. That's yeah. going to be up at cbc.ca slash Q. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that song because pink time, um, can you describe what's happening in that song there? Well, you know, Again, you know, we were talking about, I mean, the song could be taken a couple of different ways, but there is a real story there. And I'll play an older song in a few minutes that that is, is kind of similar because it, it touches people in some different ways. But, I mean, it could be that disenfranchisement in a relationship where, where the one person is desperate for the other person to know them and understand them. And some people have taken it that way in listening to the song, but it is a true story about a trucker and his wife and their 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 dream place on Georgian Bay and and she gets Alzheimer's and uh, every time he's a long haul trucker and every time he comes home she's gotten worse and worse and she doesn't know him. and uh, he takes her down to her beloved Georgian Bay and they both don't come back up and it it explores a lot of things obviously and and I think for a lot of people um, it hits a nerve oh uh, yeah. I mean, but it hits a nerve culturally too because that pink time that we all, and, and that's, you know, I take the liberty, that's my expression and Kathy's expression, you know, we, we, we see the pink time as the sun setting and it's that time just before dusk when the, you have a particular kind of sky and, mm -hmm. and it's been a warm day and that pink time is, is there and, and it's just before dark. So that's, that's where that expression came from. But, um, yeah, yeah I think it's a pretty powerful story. Probably. The most powerful song on the record. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You really do. You have such a beautiful and intense and interesting relationship with Catherine or Kathy, as you call her, Kath, and uh, your wife. You you've even written about her in the past. But um, when you do write or sing a song like Pink Time and and you know thinking about a future with your beloved, do do you think of your wife? I mean, what she would do to support you, what you would do to support her. <laughs> I. She's just. There. She's a rock. She's good. She's there. She doesn't put up with much guff. Um, <laughs> she's been a great, wonderful muse for a lot of songs. So much so she thinks she should have credit on the songs. She, <laughs> Maybe she should. She should. Yeah. There's been a few phrases here and there that I've borrowed from, <laughs> from her and her family. And uh, you know, but it's it's you know, talking about the craft of music and and Kath and and that you know there's a song in this record called Another Year, and uh, her mom died quite young, and uh, so again, catching up on business. I had never written about this. So I wrote this song. We were down in Austin and I played it for Kath and she said, you can't do this. You can't put that on the record. And I said, 
but Kath, this is what I do. I'm a songwriter. And she says, no, it's, it's, it's too personal. It's too close to home. And it's, it was her mom's birthday the next day. Wow. And uh, so we kind of had a disagreement, went our separate ways. Next day, a big storm blew through. And in the song, I talk about the rainbow stretching from one end of the lake to the other. Now, this is the lake where her mom died at the cottage, getting it ready for us. And, um, and we, uh, so we spent one last summer there, uh, a week there before we, and that was the night before we left and there was a big storm came through. We had a big rainbow stretch from one end of the lake to the other. So over the cottage and we called, Hey Vic, come down and, and Vic comes out of the cottage and says, yep, that's Denise. She's saying goodbye. So, so I write, write this song and then, and Kathy says, you can't put that on the record. And then, um, the next day we have the storm go through, it's her mom's birthday this big rainbow as I'm driving back to to our place and I get a phone call and it's Kath and, and she says, do you see the rainbow? And I said, yeah, it's your mom saying it's okay to put the song in the record. So it, it was, you know, she was a powerful, powerful person. And I believe in those angels and I talk about them on that, in that particular song, but they kind of run throughout the record, you know. I knew, I, I was forewarned when I listened to your album, I knew you would do this to me. Do you see what I'm bringing out here? Oh, do you see this? This is I a do. box of Kleenexes. I knew, I knew it was going to happen. That was very I beautiful. <laughs> um, no, that's just so, so pretty and um, special. And, yeah, you know, when well, you, you look at the lyrics that you have written, I, one of the ones that made me smile and I think makes a lot of people smile, country girls never get old. Yeah. And I love it's the in the lyric it's country girls and rock and roll never get old, but what about the boys? Do you get old? Are you getting I, old? You know I don't feel it. You know it's like, you know I think that the one thing you have to do. A couple of years ago I had uh, the pleasure of, of 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 performing with with one of my, you know, big inspirations is is a performer Bruce, Bruce Springsteen and. Um, just love the guy and he walks the walk and he's he's a wonderful human being on and off stage which is pretty important to me very important to me because there's a lot of talented people but it's what's in your heart that counts and uh he got off stage and he was soaking wet and he's hugging me and Kath and he's giggling like a 15 year old right and in like he had just come out of the garage with his buddies jamming with his buddies and so all the years he's done that he still has that energy that he dives in as much as you can call yourself a professional and the thousands of shows you do and I've always tried to do that and went you know that's what I try to do yeah. I try to get on stage and I try to tap into that 15 year old and that's probably one of the reasons I really really love performing and performing these songs because it's a bit of a trust with your audience and you know you give up possession of these songs and people take possession of them and they mean a lot to people and I try not to take that lightly and um, you want another one? Oh my goodness! I try not to take no, that lightly. You know, but I mean, it, it, Springsteen was. Yeah. It, you know that that's just magical when you see that, and 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 I go, well, you know, that's what I try to do. You, you as much as you're professional, you got to tap into that boy inside the man, if you will. You know. Yeah, and the thing is with your songs, I mean, they really are touching, and I I have to say, you know, the producers at Q, they really they work so hard, and. The one that helped me prepare and put a lot of this together, really put his heart into it, is this Mitch Pollock. And yeah. the reason he amused me so much is that he's a huge fan and he's pretty young. He says that, you know, yeah. one of the first concerts he ever saw, it was oh, you cool. because his mom dragged him across the country to watch you. And he talked yeah. about times where you would climb up the scaffolding and, you know, crazy and concerts I'm like of that. Yeah. Are you afraid of heights? <laughs> Man. But, okay. So you will not see yeah. Tom Cochran climbing up the scaffolding no, I, I'm, tonight. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I do that. And, you know, it just, it was something that happened. Happen. You yeah, just yeah. Get, you, you you get in that trance and and you feel that uh, you 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 kind of transcend some of those things that restrict you in real life. You know, when you're on stage, yeah. and that's part part of the beauty of being a performer. I totally. Think. And I, I think you know? about your audience and you know people like Mitch or young people. Oh, that's, and that's great. I mean, that's such. I feel so honored. And well, that's it, right? And do you? I mean, do you out there that like my music? Think, yeah. Do you think about those people that are out there as far as a demographic? Are they young? Are they old? Are they men? Are they women? Do you or how do you how do you see the people that love and listen to your music? Well, I mean, I, I think that 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 you know the beauty of what I do is it covers both uh, genders and 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 a lot of different demographics, and that's the 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 fascinating thing about it, and. and um, I feel really lucky to be able to touch, uh, you know, cause a lot of artists, you know, maybe appeal 
heavy to a male demographic. And we did at one time, you know, as Red Rider with Lunatic Fringe and For White sure. Hot and some of those songs. And then that sort of morphed a bit to, to where it's kind of split down the middle. And, um, but the, you know, the main thing is to, to touch people. And, 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 uh, like I said, the songs are a trust, you know, and, 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 you know, you give up ownership of them and, and people, uh, attach memories and feelings and emotions and a lot of stuff to them. And, and people say, well, what's the biggest moment in your life or your career? And I said, well, you know, obviously having the cliched line is having your kids. That's obviously you know, a huge moment for me. Um, but, you know, I think it's when the, it's all those little moments when people come up to you and they say, well, this song got me through this or this, this song meant, meant this and, and always will. Every time I hear that, it's this magic time with, with, with somebody I fell in love with by the lake or whatever. And, uh, and th those are pretty special moments. And those are the moments you kind of string together and they, they kind of make, make up for a pretty, pretty big, broad palette of, yeah. of, of rich emotions. You know, when you talk about songs having an impact, so many musicians, they'd kill to have the impact that you had with Life is a Highway. And with that particular song and what it means to so many people, now after so much time has passed, you know, there are a lot of musicians and artists, they just, they really want to get on to the new music. They don't mm -hmm. always want to have to go back to those old hits. But you can't with that because everybody loves that song and it means yeah. so much to them. So what does it mean for you now when you play Life is a Highway? I, I just, I get, we get so much energy back from the audience that it's hard not to love playing it. You know, it's, it's pretty much that simple. I mean, it's, some of these songs just have that, just generate that kind of energy. And, and so I feel really lucky to be able to, to uh, partake in that and, 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 and be part of that. And it's just uh, a privilege to be able to play them. I, I could never understand artists that go, no, I'm tired of playing my hits. I'm going to come out and just strictly play my new record. But, um, you know, with that said, it's great to have some of these new songs to play and, and the way they're going over, you know, we, we intended on maybe adding two or three and now we're adding four or five, mm -hmm. six, and then, but we still have the non-negotiables, which are those songs. It's that, like Life's a Highway, Big League, which I think we'll maybe play in a bit here and, uh, you know, Boy Inside the Man, all those songs. Yeah, we, yeah. We've got to play those songs because they mean so much to people that are coming to these shows. Oh, you mentioned yeah. Big League and that, that really means a lot, especially a lot to Canadians too. And uh, it's, you know, one of those things where a lot of people do know the real meaning behind it, but still to this day, there are probably a lot of people that might not fully know, just think maybe it's about a, a young man hitting the big leagues, getting to the big leagues rather. But um, if you were to tell us now, even for people who maybe are younger yeah. and haven't heard it, what, what What's that song really about? Well, it, it's about what you just said, but it's, again, I think there's layers to it. And, and you know, I was traveling in the Northland and uh, uh, we were on a tour and this is back in mid eighties. And, and um, uh, uh, a gentleman came up to me, he said, my son's a big fan of Boy Inside the Man. I said, is he coming to the show tonight? And he was a custodian in, in Northern Ontario at a rink. And, um, and he said, no, he, he died in a car accident. And, uh, but he was an aspiring hockey player and he was a good one. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I thought, you know, oh, that was powerful. And I knew it would end up in a song, some description. And the thing about that song, you know, people talk about, um, you know, we played it, Kenny and I had, had the honor of playing it at Luke Bourdon's, uh, who was a great one. We never got a chance to meet him, but you kind of feel a little piece of you is gone, you know, and that whole team loved them. Like the Vancouver Canucks were crying when we, we came off the ice after playing that song. It was powerful. How did you get through that? It was just, you know, it, it was hard. Yeah, it was hard to, to finish that performance. It, you could, the, the energy in that room was so powerful. Um, he was loved and he, he would have been a great hockey player, but talking to some of these guys, he obviously had a big heart, which again, I think is so important. And, um, Initially, we said, no, no, we can't do that. That's a private thing for the family. And then uh, my agent, uh, who lives out there, um, called me and said, Tom, you got to do this. You know, they want you to do this. So so we did it, and, and I'm glad we did because it was probably more, one of the most powerful performances Kenny and I have ever done together, Kenny Greer. And, um, yeah, it, was, it means a lot. Again, that, that song, Pat, the great Pat Quinn, who just passed away, mm -hmm. Um, I remember going into the dressing room in, in 1990 and he'd be, he'd play big league for the, the Canucks before they went out there. Um, 
you know, and, and I get that story a lot from minor league hockey and, and kids and dads that kind of indoctrinate their kids to my music. You know, uh, Nazim Kadri's dad, I think, was driving to the hospital and, and uh, was playing that song because <laughs> as an immigrant, yeah. he, wa- he wanted his son to be a hockey player, you know. <laughs> so I met him at a hockey uh, a, a golf tournament and I went up and I said, Nazim, you probably don't know me, but I'm, I just want to shake your hand. I'm Tom Cogger. I think you're a great hockey player and the Leafs are lucky to have you. And he went, it's you. He says, I got to <laughs> take a picture of you for my dad. Aww. And that was, that was really, that, that was, that was a neat moment. He's, uh, he, yeah, he's a good one. I think he's got a good heart too. And, and, but you know, that, so the song just has different meanings for everybody, but it's a cultural song that kind of, I think, demonstrates you know, how this sport pulls our country together, you know, um, in so many ways. You know, my mom was the one to, it was about a boy and his dad, but really my mom was the one to drive me to hockey practices when I was a kid. My dad was on the road so much, but. Um, all right, I hear you that for all so the hockey moms out there. There's a lot of, moms. There. A lot of yes. hockey moms out there You get there some too. props. Okay. Yeah. Listen, Tom Cochran, we would love, we would just love it if you would play big league for us. Would you yeah. do that? I'd be, I'd be honored. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do that. All right. Let's bring Billy and Jessica back out here. 